tribulation in the time of trouble. He will do that. He will guide you. Can somebody say he will guide you? God, we come now and we thank you for your word. We just let the lamp into our people and light into our pathway. We would ask right now that you speak to us in this season that you give a word to encourage our souls. And we ask now that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. For oh, Lord, I'm strength.
there is a rapid degree of fear that's circulating throughout our land. If you can look at the attendance today and see, which is understandable, by the way, uh, the worry that uh, this pandemic that has plagued our land has many people in fear of catching a virus. And it was even asked to me, then, well, should I counsel worship service? I even called colleagues to find out, well, what are you doing? And then one of my friends sent me a text message and said that in this season of received panic, don't forget to have faith. Amen. Because I know that the coronavirus is deadly. I know that it's serious. I know that it's potent and powerful. But can I just pause for a second, Sister Tony, and say that I don't care what virus is circulating the land, is that I serve a God who specializes God in heaven this morning. Is there anybody in the house other than me that knows that this is not the first time that God has had to deal with diseases in the land? It is not the first time that God has had to deal with epidemics and pandemics. It is not the first time that God has had to deal with the drought and there is no room, there is no harvest in the land. The same God that brought Israel out of bondage is the same God that can come into this world today and deal with any pandemic or epidemic that we're dealing with. And so I've come by to remind you that in the midst of fear and in the midst of trouble and in the midst of trials, please don't have a grasshopper faith. Amen, somebody. I'm almost, I'm almost done. So let me go into this text quickly. Is that in the text is that God has promised them the inheritance of Canaan. Let me, let me, let me give y'all some. Some of y'all didn't go to Sunday school growing up, so let me have to bring, bring you up to speed on where we are. Is that you remember that God has sent Moses over uh, to Pharaoh to tell Pharaoh. Uh, to let the people of God go because God says I will lead them out of bondage into Canaan, the promised land. Yeah. God came and, and, and Moses went to Pharaoh. And what's interesting about this particular narrative is that God told Moses that when you go over to Pharaoh, he says, I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. We look at Exodus when we get a chance. And some, God is saying, look, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. I'm going to bring you, I'm going to bring them out of bondage. It's up to Pharaoh to let you go. But let me tell you something. Because I'm God and I have all power, I'm going to show you that when you get up out of bondage, that you ain't the reason why you got out of bondage. Preach the Lord Wesley. That's why I will harden the heart of Pharaoh. I'm going, to, I'm going to make it hard for you, Moses, so that when you finally get out of Egypt and out of bondage, you will, you will not get the credit, but give me the credit. And so they come, they come out, they go out of bondage, and they go out of Egypt, and they're, and they're in the wilderness for 40 years, and they're about to enter the space and the place that God had promised them. And so what had happened is that they sent spies over, over to the other land to see what kind of obstacles that would be in their way. And so when they went over there, the Bible says that they went over, they sent spies over, and when they came back with the report, they said, look, we, 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 we want to go over Canaan, but the problem is, is that they, we are like grasshoppers in their eyesight. Are y'all with me this morning? Yeah. Three things I want to give you before we go. One, I want to look at, first of all, a preview of your blessing. Second, I want to talk to you about perceived barriers. And then third, I want to talk to you about promised land and breakthroughs. Are y'all with me this morning? The Bible says, look, it says, look, we, we went over and they were afraid because they says, look, when we saw the enemy, when we saw the land, it was too big, too robust, too overwhelming for us to conquer. Is there anybody in, in this house today that has ever had an experience in your life where you look over, God has promised you some stuff, and then when you look over, he says, it looks too big for me to conquer. The degree, the education I want is too big. The job I've been praying for is too big. The, 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 the habit that I have is, is too big. It's, this, this disease
seed that I have is too big. And so you, you, God has promised you that you will be the head and not the tail. God has promised you that I will make a way out of no way. God has promised you that I will take the disease out of your body. God has promised you that I will give you the land. But when you look over to the other side, it looked too big for you to conquer. God said me to tell you, don't worry about how big your pain is, your problem is, your, your obstacles are. Because God says, look, I'm bigger than anything that you have to conquer. Is there anybody in the house that knows that it does not matter, it does not matter how big it is, you serve a God that is able to turn dark yesterday into bright tomorrow? Yeah. 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 I feel like this right now. Because when I think about how good God has been and how many promises God has given me, it, it has not always been easy, but God said, look, if I told you I'm going to give it to you, I'm going to give it to you. That's right. Here it is. I talked to my grandmama this week. It was really interesting. I talked to my grandmama this week. You know, my grandmama's getting ready to turn uh, 90 years old. Amen. Yeah. She, says, she says, look, I was talking to her. She says, she says, Daryl, they say that I'm on the early, uh, the early beginnings of Alzheimer's. She says, when they took me to the doctor, she says, and some girl came in who looked like she'd just been born. And she tried to give me advice and talk to me about what to do. She said, child, let me tell you something. I got grandchildren older than you are. And she said, that, and so you, 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 just, you, you, you weren't even born. You just been born a few years ago. She said, look, I'm made, she said, look, I was born in 1930. You do the math. And she said, look, the same God that brought me up from 1930 to 2020 is the same God that's going to bring me over into the future. She said, I don't care what y'all say. She said, I'm 90 years old, ain't got diabetes, ain't got high blood pressure, ain't got no high cholesterol. And so I serve a God that is able, yes, yes, yes. Yes, that's able to turn dark yesterdays into bright tomorrow. I serve a God that has all power in his hand. Don't even talk to me about <laughs> what kind of advice you got. She said, I may, she said, y'all think I got all time. She said, but I remember, she said, I had to tell them that I remember that God brought me through yesterday. She said, I may have all time, but I ain't forgot about how good God is been. Look at your neighbor say, I may have all time, but I still remember how God brought me over and over. Is there anybody other than me that can remember how good God has been in your life? So here it is. They said, look, the light grasshoppers. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Okay, I know we got to go. He said, I'm like grass, they're like grasshoppers. We're, we're like grasshoppers to them. But here it is. Look at the text. I want you to see something. We saw, verse number 32, 33. We saw the Nephilim, their descendants of Anak, came to Nephilim. We seen, watch this. Don't miss this, brother Wilson. We look at the text. We seem, y'all read it, y'all read it, like grasshoppers to them. Mm -hmm. yes. That ain't that ain't what I read. Y'all y'all told y'all to read the text. They said, we seem like grasshoppers, watch this. To ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. That's the word right there. All by itself. Yeah. Yeah. Is that is that the reason why we this is, you know we we are in we're in women's history month and thank you. Uh, Sister Arnold for that beautiful reading that she gave Monica. Thank you for the one you gave us last week. And, and then last month was Black History Month. Imagine if black people, Latinas, yeah. women, saw themselves as grasshoppers. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right now, right now, make people shout, get up on your feet, give God some glory. Because they said, look, if, 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 if Harriet Tubman had seen herself as a grasshopper, yes. We would not have had the Underground Railroad. If Martin King had seen himself as a grasshopper, we would not have made it through the dark days of the Civil Rights Movement. I've come by to tell you that you got to stop looking at yourself as grasshoppers. And the reason why your enemy see you as a grasshopper is because you see yourself as a grasshopper. They said, we see ourselves, he said, and he said, and because we saw ourselves that way, yes. then they saw us that way. Yes. Okay, I'm done. Yeah. 
I told you I could be out about 10 minutes, right? Yeah. Can, we, can we get our praise on right now? Yeah. Go back up to chapter 13, verse 1. The Lord said to Moses, Send some men to explore the land of Canaan. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Which I am giving them. At verse 33, they were worried about getting into Canaan because they saw how big the obstacles were. But the problem is they forgot what happened at verse number one. That's a word. That's a word. The problem is, is that two men ago are stuck on verse 33. Preach Reverend Wesley. And they forgot about the promise at verse number one. Look at your name and say, neighbor, no matter how hard it is, remember what God said at verse number one. God said, look, I'm going to give you Canaan. I don't care how bad it is. I don't care how difficult it is. I promise you that I was going to give you Canaan. I promise you that you were going to have promised land opportunities and possibilities for you to suck on what's going on in the midst of your verse 33 experience. And I already told you to remember what happened in verse number one. Yes. What happened in verse number one? God promised you the land is flowing with milk and honey. God yes. promised you that you will be the head and not the tail. God yes. promised you that you will be overcomers. God promised you that you will get through and you will get over any difficulty in your life. Is there anybody other than me that says, thank you, God, I don't care how hard it is. I remember it, but you already promised me. You promised me that I was going to overcome. You promised me that I was going to get through. You promised me that I was going to get over disease, that I was going to get over all kind of despair, that I was going to get over all my bad habits because I serve a God that means what he says and says what he means. It does not matter what the future holds, but it matters who holds the future. And I see how God has brought me over. When I think about how good God has been, when I think about how many mountains God has brought me over, the same God that delivered me on yesterday is the same God that can deliver me right now. If you believe God is the God of deliverance, let's go ahead and open up your mouth and say thank you, Jesus. If you believe God is the God of deliverance, open your mouth and say hallelujah. If I think they folk that don't mind shouting, God is great.